Hello and welcome to this quick session on different packet analyzers we can use to dissect industrial control traffic. Right? This is really meant just to be a, a quick introduction to really three different tools. And, and most of these started in the IT world, but don't, don't hold that against them. Uh, when we look at Wireshark, uh, or, which is the most popular tool in, in use today. And whether you're in IT or, or ICS, OT, you've, you've probably used Wireshark somewhere along the road. We're also going to talk about OT PCAP Analyzer, which has recently been released by SendSaber. So I thought it was, was, were, was worth mentioning, and we can take a quick peek at that. And then I also like an honorable mention for Network Miner, because it does have a few little tricks uh, up its sleeve that Wireshark doesn't for for whatever reason. So I thought I would uh, we take a real quick peek at that as well. So again, this is really just meant to be a quick introduction to these different tools. I have a much longer workshop for you know, Wireshark and looking at the other tools and, and hopefully I'll, uh, I'm doing an updated version of that to release for everybody. So, um, but for now, uh, we want to look at these different packet capture utilities. Well, to do that, we probably should look at a packet capture, especially from the, the OT side of the house. So uh, one of the packet captures or the packet capture we're going to look at today actually came from this GitHub repository. So I appreciate uh, there's a couple great GitHub repositories out there uh, that make ICS OT packet captures available. And, and this is definitely one of them that I really like to to work with and, and share with others. So definitely check it out. You can see there's a PCAPS folder there or a repository that you can go in and, and look for all the different protocols if you want to start looking at getting into them. Uh, and that's really the main reason I wanted to put this video together because it's, it's really about how we learn and better understand the protocols and the interactions between systems and the OT network to better learn how not only to protect them, yes, at a, at a high level, but also when we start looking at what's normal communication look like. You know, what what does if we know what normal communication looks like, then we can start to look at, uh, or you can look at identifying what's what's not normal, what's either suspicious, maybe it is malicious, maybe there's a, an attacker in the network, or maybe it's some type of fault condition that, that could cascade and have a significant impact in the environment. You know, neither we want to have happen. And so we can look for those types of fault conditions and, and suspicious activities uh, to be able to respond to. Again, whether it's from a security perspective, whether it's from an operations perspective, it's you know we're all on the same team working towards the the same goal to keep that site up and running, and of course keep everybody safe, right? But I wanted to look at these real quickly, and again, I could spend hours and hours talking, probably forty hours talking about uh, Wireshark, but I'm going to go ahead and open up this uh, capture that we have. And uh, you can see it opens right up, and we can see that this is Modbus traffic as well as some general TCP traffic. The, for me, the really cool thing about Wireshark is that it has these different parsers or dissectors that the community has created for free. Right? And Wireshark is an open source free utility that you can use to capture traffic but also read that capture traffic. And those parsers or dissectors essentially translate it into a format that makes it easier for us to read. So yes, we can see in the lower right-hand corner, you can see what the hex looks like of you know, for translating the, the zeros and ones that go out over the wired uh, path or the wireless path that it you know, the traffic takes. I actually think that the lower left-hand corner is very cool, and a lot of people don't get into that, but it actually breaks down the packets from an OSI perspective. And so you actually, at the top, have your level one, right? your, your uh, physical layer. You could go to layer two, 
So that's the, the data link layer. So that's where we see things like MAC addresses of systems that are communicating. We go up to layer three, the network layer. So that's where we see TCP IP particularly happens, or I should say IP, sorry, more specifically. So we have IP, so that's why we see IP addresses. And then we get to the transport layer where protocols like TCP and, and UDP live. And so that's where we're, we're talking about Modbus and Modbus TCP today. And so that's where in the capture you can see, yes, there's some general TCP uh, communication that's that's happening. And I could sit here and talk about just what we see in those packages. Okay, I'll save that for the workshop. But we can see here where it starts to, where Wireshark starts to translate Modbus for us. And so not only can we see here's one IP address communicating with another IP address, but we can see what Modbus commands are being sent and what's being you know, replied back with, right? So what information is being sent back? I'm going to try and find a little bit better example to, to look like. So let's find a good packet that we can work with. And in this case, it was a simple example. So I always like when you talk about Modbus, right? Modbus, it, it, in some ways, it, it works like, a, think of SNMP in the IT world, or just think you have a database. And in that database, it stores pieces of information, usually small pieces of information. So that's where we talk about the differences between coils versus registers. But what you'll see with a, a coil is we can send a command to read a very specific piece of information at a very specific location in the, if you want, the Modbus database. So we can see this host at 10.0.0.9 sends a request to 10.0.0.3. And then it's going to ask, well, tell me what piece of information do you have located in this coil? So we can see packet 51 is the request, and we can see packet 52 is the response. See, even Wireshark tells us query versus response. And so I can go into that response, and then I can actually see what that response was. Let me kind of close this up and make it. So I can see that Modbus was responding with an answer. Now, coils are very, very simple. And it it's stores a binary value. So it stores either a zero or a one. And so we send a request for a single coil and said, hey, tell us the value, zero or one, of this one piece of information, of this one bucket or this one field that you have in this, this entire database. And then you can see that host, more than likely a PLC, responded back and said, oh, yeah, the value of this field is zero. It's not one, it's zero. Now, in the PLC world, that could mean anything. But let's say maybe that's the value for whether you have the run switch enabled on that PLC or not. So the, the run switch you know, puts essentially the PLC into read-only mode. So that way you can't make changes to it and you can't upload firmware you can't change the plc programming which which also means an attacker can't make those changes so we want to make sure plcs when they're running when they're not being uh, programmed right when they're not being updated we want to make sure that that switch is set and so we want to make sure let's say that uh, in this case we might see that that value says false and and uh, ooh, that you know that switch is not set, so we need to go into the field and, and set it. But that's one of the great things about Wireshark, right, with these dissectors, with these parsers. It allows us to translate that information. And then, especially as you're learning about different industrial control protocols or learning how the protocols and the systems in your environment communicate, it's a critical tool. And it, it's free. It's awesome, right? It's, it, it helps us um, with being able to do so much and looking at different aspects of, of the network. Right? And real quickly, just to add, because a lot of conversations in ICS OT environments talk about using packet captures to create asset inventories. So how can I see what's out there? And there's this statistics uh, menu. 
And so there's a couple options, but we're just going to look at one for right now. But I can go and look at conversations. And so real quickly, you can see that Wireshark parses through all that data. And then it tells us, hey, we saw basically these six different conversations on the network saying, here's the source MAC address and here's the destination MAC address. So who's talking to who? Right, here's the MAC addresses. You can also get the IP addresses for them. And you can see, so there's five IP addresses. We can also see that there's uh, different TCP ports that are in use. And we can see that the, the most used port in this packet capture is 502, which is the default port associated with Modbus. So it allows us to get all these different views, not only to see the traffic and who's communicating with who, which becomes important when we're looking for an abnormal or anomalous behavior down the road, right? Because if all of a sudden you have two hosts talking to each other that had never talked to each other before, something is, is happening in the environment that we need to look into. But again, it also gives us, oh, here's IP addresses for hosts in your environment. Do you know what these are? If not, we need to investigate and determine if they're supposed to be there or not. And then also, you'll be able to look at the MAC addresses for each as well. So Wireshark is a great tool. Again, I'll, I'll have my, my updated Wireshark workshop um, kind of released, hopefully, in the next week or two. Um, this is not supposed to be the Wireshark <laughs> course, but you can see how, how much I love Wireshark and love getting to work with it and, and love getting to show others what it looks like. So so Wireshark is the place you want to start with. Uh, again, it's one of those tools that started out in IT by a gentleman, uh, Gerald Combs, who um, worked in a, at a telecom, and he needed to be able to troubleshoot his own network issues without paying tens of thousands of dollars for a network analyzer, and that's where Wireshark was was born. Uh, originally called ethereal but that's a whole other story for a different day but leave it to say Fire, wireshark is a, a great tool it's the one tool you're you're going to ever need from a packet capture and analysis perspective but it is interesting that there are other tools out there that have different features or different functions or they come from a different perspective like sinsaber released a uh, utility and let me pull this up and so they call it, they have their OTP cap analyzer. So, and I haven't dug too much uh, into it. So I'm not sure if there's more features or there's probably more features to come. So what they do, instead of having it run as a client app on your system, like Wireshark, in this case, you can see they actually run a local web server on port 2600. So then your browser opens up connects to that web service, and then you're able to upload the packet capture. So I uploaded the same packet capture we we're looking at in Wireshark. And you can see, it, oh, same, it's kind of the same idea where we get an idea of how many assets are in the environment. Now remember, you can take the MAC addresses and the really the first half of that MAC address, which is 48 bits long, but you take the first half in hex, and those addresses are registered in an IEEE database to tell you who the associated vendor is. So we can see, and, and you can see this in Wireshark as well. We just didn't highlight it. So you can see we're seeing an Apple device and an Intel, uh, I should say, the network interface, right? Uh, the one comes up as run, run top, right? GVC, epigram. Uh, in a lot of industrial control environments, right? You might see things like Rockwell or Schneider or... Um, uh, Omicron or you know, so on and, and so forth. but And then it also gives us the protocol breakdown. And like we were seeing in Wireshark, all of the packets were related to Modbus in some way, shape, or form. So it was either actual Modbus TCP traffic or it was just TCP traffic opening up connections over a TCP 502, the, the Modbus port. So it's, so it's not distinguishing between TCP versus Modbus TCP, but like Wireshark did, it's just, it's just going off of ports, right? But it gives you at a, at a high level, um, you know, an idea of what's there. And then you can see here, it does give you an asset summary. So we can see, again, those vendors, we can see the IP addresses, 
we can see uh, it has IP count. So I'll have to play a little bit more with, with this, uh, why this three comp shows up as two. I don't know if it's communicating with two different hosts or not. Uh, you can see whether it's it's kind of grouped these into, oh, if we see VMware, that's probably virtualized versus, you know, Apple. Well, I don't know if I would call that a workstation, but okay, we'll, we'll go with it, right? If it's running on, on a VLAN, right? Here's those MAC addresses we saw. So remember, we can take that first half of the MAC address, look that up and see what host it is. And then you can also get the further breakdown. You can see where here's the associate with that one specific IP address. Right, the protocol breakdown. We can look at kind of this idea of a graph um, of the communication, which I think has has potential. Or you know, maybe we need a larger packet to get um, a lot more interesting uh, sites. Um, you can see, you know, the kind of the timeline. So this could help, especially whether you're doing troubleshooting and looking at a specific time, what's happening on the network, or what about incident response, where we have to nail that time timeline and understand when an attacker was doing what on the uh, the network when we were doing that analysis. So I thought there's, you know, definitely a lot of lot of potential here, being able to to look at the the timeline. Um, and then kind of that general attributes, which we were seeing at a high level over here, right? So it is, and I think it's just released. It's still, I think it's kind of in beta or this is their first formal version. So I think there's there's a lot of potential there. Um, you know, so you can get to play with it and, and just kind of click on, on those different options and just, you know, or bring it back to those, um, those sets, right? But that's OTP cap analyzer by SinSaber. Again, so I think there's definitely a lot of potential there moving forward. Uh, and then I did want to mention, again, quick honorable mention to Network Miner. It's not as helpful in OT environments as it is in IT, but it still can be helpful because Wireshark doesn't do a couple of things that, that Network Miner does for you automatically. Uh, and you can see... Uh, that network miner tries to give you, oh, here's a list of all the IP addresses that we see in the packet capture, which is one thing we like to have for building an asset register, right? You can look at additional pieces of information. So you can see things like the MAC address that we're looking at, who the associated vendor is. We can see, um, you know, get the traffic, who's sending, receiving, right? We can see who it's talking to. Right, so we can actually see, you know, oh, here's two different sessions between, you know, this 10.0.0.8 host and the other host at 10.0.0.57. Now it sees all of these more as running Windows, which could be the case. Maybe this is a simulated OT environment that they ran this packet capture in, or network miner could be mistaken. So it's not always 100% accurate. Yeah, it's, it's much more, yes, an, an IT tool. But um, so it gives you that, that overview though of your host. Again, if you're building an asset register, it's a great tool. You can also see things like sessions. And um, the other thing that network miner does, which we don't have in this packet capture, but if there's data being transmitted and in that data, there's a file. So whether it's a, like a picture or think like a word document, or maybe like some type of uh, uh, kind of process data file that network miner sees that file and it pulls it out for you. So if there is that file or that picture, that image file that's being sent, it'll actually show you the document. It'll actually give you a copy of that image, which is really cool um, that it does that automatically. Wireshark can do that, but you have to work to make it happen, and it's not um, that intuitive to do. So Network Miner does have some cool little things that it does that that the others don't. So that's why I wanted to mention it. But um, with that, again, I was trying to make this fairly quick and fairly short, but that's a quick introduction to, to Wireshark. You know, we look at, and also from, from SinSaber, they have their, their OT PCAP analyzer and just a honorable mention for, for Network Miner, so, which again, can be very fun, especially if you work in, in IT environments. So uh, with that, Thank you for taking the time to check out the video. If you have questions, comments, concerns, feel free to reach out to me anytime. You can find me. There's my email address, or you can find me on LinkedIn at Mike Holcomb.
and thank you.